What if I told you that AI music is already here and capable of generating some of the most captivating music ever created? Deep in the engineering departments of the world's largest technology companies lies the power to replace every musician in the world just like that. But this technology is unable to get a commercial release. Instead, the AI music tools that reach the marketplace are significantly constrained. With limited ability to intuitively create coherent musical pieces, many of these tools are faced with derision by critics and a difference from fans. Why is it that visual AI tools like Midjourney, Stable Diffusion, and Dali have faced such significant commercial traction and mainstream adoption, yet you'd be hard pushed to find such household names in the world of AI music. Yes, we've got passable tools from Meta and Google and new entrants like Suno, but what appears a tidal wave in visual art and text-based media AI is more like a splash in a puddle in AI music. Events in the past week exposed some of the behind the scenes chicanery taking place between the largest players in music and tech. Like a whale coming up for air, these events give us a glimpse of what's going on beneath the waters without having to speculate. At Newsic, we've been researching AI music since 2017, and it's clear we're now at an inflection point for this space. Let's jump in to what's new. First up, on Tuesday, Jima and Seikum, the collective management organizations out of Europe, published a report on Gen AI music. It found that by 2028, the global market for generative AI music will exceed $3 billion, representing a compound annual growth rate of 60%. Somewhat inevitably, the study also found that rights holders are uneasy about the prospect that AI holds for their incomes. 95% of surveyed members felt that AI provides should disclose when they use copyrighted material for training data, while 93% agreed that policymakers should pay closer attention to the challenges raised by copyright and AI. It should be noted that only 15,000 GEMA and SACOM members were surveyed for this study, and they tended to skew towards an older demographic, with only 29% of survey participants being under 44. A report like this shows us that industry forces are taking the advent of generative AI music seriously, and it's only a matter of time before they'll be lobbying policymakers. This is unlikely to have the effect that they want. It's not to say that lawmakers shouldn't be involved, but frankly speaking, copyright has never really worked. Yeah, if you're Disney and you've got millions of dollars and an army of lawyers at your disposal, then great. But for independent musicians and creators, copyright is incredibly limited. The question that's being overlooked in a report like this is the capacity for AI to serve as a catalyst for establishing foundational remunerative technology. Truly, this is a shift that goes beyond copyright itself, a right being something that's inferred onto you by an external authority to an asset that which you own and control. Actually, the technology is already here to transfer from digital rights to digital assets. It's just a matter of implementing it. There's a link to the report in the description below. Check it out and let us know what you think. Bunch of Luddites or well-founded concerns. On Thursday, Google rolled out Music FX to everyone. This demo has been kicking around in the AI test kitchen since last December, but opening up to everyone demonstrates their confidence that the tool is robust and it's not inciting the ire of major rights holders. So let's take a look at what's going on with it. So true to form, I can't reference a major artist's name when I'm trying to create a new song. So I'll change it to smooth hip hop. Oh, it doesn't like that. And oh, that works. The output is not bad, but what's missing is a coherent way to tie it all together. As we discussed, that's partly due to not wanting to tread on the toes of the majors, unlike another major tech company. The big news is in, and that is that UMG have pulled their entire catalogue from TikTok in a dispute about artist compensation and AI. This started heating up towards the end of January when the licensing deal between the two parties was coming up for renewal. UMG claimed that TikTok are not paying their fair share for the music which is fundamental to their platform. 
Furthermore, they say TikTok is failing to protect artists from the harmful effects of AI. They accused TikTok of bullying tactics and failing to address their concerns about the effects of AI and platform safety. UMG is the world's largest music company. It's highly profitable and valued at over $50 billion. They eventually navigated the existential threat posed by peer-to-peer -peer file sharing and the advent of digitization at the turn of the millennium, leading to the invention of music streaming that has proved a more popular model than file sharing. A move like this against TikTok shows what lengths they'll go to to protect their valuable musical assets. The music industry has proved to be enormously resilient, owned and controlled by a small group of powerful players. From BlackRock's stake in Warner to Tencent Music Entertainment, the Chinese tech giant's stake in Universal Music, to Sony's interests in Bandcamp. These are many of the same groups that are investing in the chips that are powering the current AI boom cycle. Furthermore, music has been established as a popular new financial asset class, with a number of funds buying up legacy catalog. Funds like Hypnosis are financed by Morgan Stanley and Blackstone, while Primary Wave is financed again by BlackRock. Pouring billions into music, these groups get biopics made, like the Elvis movie, Rocket Man, Get On Up, Bohemian Rhapsody, the list goes on. This new content, in turn, boosts the catalogue's overall popularity, sync opportunities, streaming numbers, which in turn boosts the yield on the investment. Do you really think that these groups will allow AI music to cannibalize their hugely profitable businesses and assets? But really, it comes down to a question of data. Right now, the best data sets are limited. Spotty metadata that misses the most pertinent musical information. If the best AI music tools on the market work with models that don't even understand what music in the style of the Beatles or Nat King Cole is, how can compelling user experiences be offered that offer music generation based on our shared understanding of music history? Music is itself a series of references, a universe of inspiration with clusters of styles and sounds overlapping with each other. You can't pretend to an AI that this corpus of musical work doesn't exist and still expect really good outcomes. But without the major label's consent, your AI music tool will be like TikTok in February 2024, with say 30% of the world's music collection missing as input material. It's unlikely that AI music will be able to proliferate without the blessing of these enormously powerful organizations. Trackable metadata is an obvious and technically feasible solution that's already in place in data pipelines in other industries. And this is good news for the musicians of the world who can financially benefit from the growth of AI music. For visual art, there isn't a large enough group to represent the rights of visual artists. Whereas in music, because of the asymmetry of the market, the oligopsony is powerful enough to negotiate with big tech, with even the most powerful tech companies in the world being reticent to fully release their technology without the consent of the music incumbents. Ironically, it ends up being kind of like a union. Though UMG will favor their own artists, everyone stands to benefit from the adoption of robust guardrails. On the creative side of AI music, researchers at John Hopkins University have created a new AI-driven method for pitch correction called Deaf Picture. It's a brand new generative deep neural network that apparently takes pitch correction to a whole new level of precision and control. This is achieved by identifying target notes on a spectrogram, predicting adjustments, correcting the spectrogram, and translating it into audio. This differs from Auto-Tune, which is based on a set of algorithms originally designed to interpret sonar data in order to locate oil underground. The distinctive sound of autotune has become a musical style in and of itself, from Cher to Kanye to T-Pain. Presumably, Diff Pitcher's results will be less robotic, but therefore less culturally recognizable and creatively stylized. It's simply another example of AI improving the tools that musicians have access to. And if the claims are correct, it will likely become ubiquitous. But as a listener, if it's properly executed, we won't actually know if it's being used on a voice or not. What are your thoughts on an innovation like this? Pitch correction without the fun or the death of autotune? 
Jay-Z will be delighted. And finally, let's take a look at the Grammys collaboration with IBM's Watson X. Basically, they've automated Instagram stories. So rather than requiring a social media intern to create content with some personality, they can create generic factoids completely devoid of personality. Obviously, there is a crazy amount of pressure for brands and creators to create more and more content on social media. So it does make sense for AI to step in and take care of this. But what I would say is what's next seriously needs more charisma to make this something that can be really compelling for audiences. Right now, this is the lamest kind of social media post. Marginally more interesting was the feature that was implemented over the live stream, which gave some facts about some of the people winning the awards. Kind of like an inobtrusive sports commentator, this is probably a feature that could be refined for award shows in the future and actually be quite useful. What it'd be really useful for is getting real-time profiles of some of the less famous people that picked up gongs this year. Tuning into the pre-Grammys award ceremony online, the bit that doesn't get televised, it would have been really useful if Watson X had some more facts about some of the winners. Unfortunately, Watson seemed pretty clueless about a lot of the behind the scenes talent. Once again, it's been really fun to see what's been happening in AI music in the past week. One can see that there's a clear will from the music industry to adopt this technology, but this just won't happen without new monetization models for proper remuneration. This will come through consensual data sets and trackable metadata rather than policy making. Think about it, in the end, for music streaming, it wasn't just regulated into existence. It was just a model that was palatable to both the music industry and listeners alike. Peer-to-peer -peer and torrenting is still here, but they sit alongside streaming as a less popular way to listen to music. We believe it will be the user experience that brings AI music to the masses. And though we may have viral glimpses of this from time to time, it will be through industry concordance that we see the most successful long-term AI music breakthroughs. And we'll be here to cover it all on Newsy. So make sure you subscribe to stay up to date and I'll see you next time.